Russian army to deploy barrage balloons to protect against Ukrainian drones. Russia is planning a network of indicator balloons inspired by the First and Second World Wars to thwart Ukraine's daring drone attacks, the Telegraph reports. The Russian aerospace firm says it has already begun testing balloons capable of holding a net that it hopes will provide protection against long-range strikes that have badly damaged energy infrastructure and other key targets inside Russia. The balloons are designed to launch from hangars, rise quickly in a row and then drop a 250 meter high net to form a protective cordon. Our main activity is the construction of cargo airships, but today, relying on the experience of our ancestors, we have created the barrier protection system, said Paulina Albeck, CEO of First Airship. She said the balloons had already been tested and that her company had received an order. Each balloon can float up to 300 meters above the ground and has a maximum payload of 30 kilograms, enough to carry a lightweight net that hangs just above the ground. The balloons can also be equipped with radar, electronic jammers and video cameras that provide 360 degree coverage with a range of up to 7 miles. These capabilities provide significant vertical coverage, creating an effective barrier against low-flying drones that threaten sensitive areas. Drones cannot see the mesh, it is too thin for them, Albeck emphasized. In April, Forbes reported that Ukraine was attacking Russia with droppable balloons. Such weapons are cheap, but their destruction requires an expensive missile. According to Russian Telegram channels, Ukrainian balloons are appearing in the skies over regions of Russia bordering Ukraine. Some of them can carry radar reflectors to attract the attention of air defense systems. According to the Russian publication MASH, each balloon also has a GPS tracker, ballast, batteries and control electronics with attack coordinates programmed into them. Forbes notes that unguided balloons have seen limited use in some wars over the past two centuries, including by Hamas, to start fires in Israel. While their impact is generally limited, these balloons place a much heavier burden on the defender than the attacker. The author writes, Earlier, Russian Federation had announced the shooting down of a kamikaze balloon. It could probably have been a Russian balloon brought down by friendly fire. Putin sees final end of war in destroying Ukrainian statehood, ISW. Russian leader Vladimir Putin's statements have indicated that he does not want to agree on anything else other than destroying Ukrainian statehood and identity. The Institute for the Study of War, ISW, said this. During a meeting with Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, Russian leader Vladimir Putin firmly rejected the notion of a negotiated ceasefire, instead advocating for a definitive conclusion to the war that would obliterate Ukrainian sovereignty. Putin emphasized that a temporary truce would only allow Ukraine to regroup and rearm, insisting on a comprehensive and irreversible end to the conflict. Putin's rhetoric and demands highlight his refusal to settle for anything less than the total dismantling of Ukrainian statehood and national identity. His conditions include the cession of substantial Ukrainian territories and the complete surrender of Ukrainian military as prerequisites for any peace talks. Furthermore, Putin likely envisions Ukraine's capitulation as a means to overthrow its democratically elected government, replacing it with a pro-Russian administration that aligns with his strategic interests. To thwart Putin's objectives, Ukraine must continue its counter-offensive operations aimed at reclaiming key territories. The international community, particularly Western allies, must accelerate their support to empower Ukraine's military efforts. This robust assistance is vital to disrupt Putin's plans, shorten the conflict, and achieve a peace settlement that respects Ukraine's sovereignty and meets the expectations of its global partners. Putin is demanding both the surrender of a significant portion of Ukraine's territory and people to Russian occupation and Ukrainian military capitulation in advance of any negotiations on an end state to the war. During the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in Astana, Kazakhstan, Putin dismissed any prospects of ceasefire negotiations. The Russian ruler often portrays the West as his main negotiating partner to secure concessions on Ukrainian sovereignty, but dismissed all intermediary parties and Ukraine's Verkhovna Rada as illegitimate or unsuitable for talks. Putin's demand for Ukraine's demilitarization as a precondition for a ceasefire highlights his strategy.